We've installed vCenter along with the single sign-on service and the inventory service. So we're going to go ahead and do the VMware vSphere web client. Now, effectively, the web client provides a lot of the functionality that we'd expect to see inside vCenter, at least from an interface perspective. We're still going to need the vCenter service itself to actually be installed somewhere. Now, the vSphere web client can be installed on another server for scale or for additional security. I'm going to go ahead and install it on my vCenter virtual machine. I've already got the installer loaded, just like for the vCenter installation. And I'm just going to go ahead and select the vSphere web client and click install. Pretty simple installation overall. And it's going to go and install the entire infrastructure for the vSphere web client, which is Adobe Flex based. So all of your clients who are going to connect to the vSphere web client are going to need to have the Flash client installed, which includes the runtime for Adobe Flex. And if you're going to access that interface locally from the server, you should also have Adobe Flex installed here. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and click Next for the welcome. And again, we have a patent listing and our end user license agreement to deal with. And then wherever I want to install it. And once again, we can change the ports, but there's no real need to do that. However, you will see that unlike the normal 80 or 8080 that you typically see with a web server here, it's 9090. And our HTTPS port is 9443. This is useful because if we already have the single sign-on service installed and vCenter installed and so on, we're not going to get conflicts with their ports. So I'm just going to click Next. And now it's asking me for the details to connect to single sign-on. When we installed single sign-on, we had a user called admin at system-domain. That's still valid here. We haven't added any additional users to single sign-on. So I'm just going to go ahead and provide the password that I previously set. I'd say for the sake of simplicity, it's better to keep these things more consistent and not overly complicate things by adding additional layers of networking or multiple IPs or DNS aliases and so on. Okay, so the web client installs completed. In another video, we're going to take a look at connecting to the web interface and configuring it. For now, I'll just go ahead and click finish.